If you thought your private GitHub repositories were safe from prying eyes, think again. This blog post caught my attention today, and I'm kind of surprised that no one's talking about it because this seems like a big deal. Anyone can access deleted and private repository data on GitHub. Specifically, you can access data from deleted forks, deleted repositories, and even private repositories on GitHub, and it's available forever. This is known by GitHub and intentionally designed that way. That's right, this is a feature, not a bug. So what's the vulnerability here? How can you access this data? Here's how the vulnerability works. Accessing deleted fork data. So let's say you have a fork of a public repository. You then commit code to your fork, and you delete your fork. So it would look something like this. You'd create the fork, commit something. Let's say that code has some private information that you don't want people seeing. For example, you might have accidentally put an API key or a password or something like that in there. And then you delete it. Now, a reasonable person would say that, okay, this repository has been deleted. This information should no longer be available. So it's fine. No big deal. However, that is a wrong assumption. The code is actually still accessible, even though it shouldn't be, right? You deleted it. But it is, and it's accessible forever, out of your control. There is absolutely nothing that you can do to remove that data from the public record. Here's how you would do that. So I'm going to go to GitHub. Uh, let's find some repository. YTDLP. That looks good. Let me just create a fork of that. Let's edit this readme file. Secret. Commit the changes. Oops. And now let's say I have this information here, this secret that I don't want to be public. Let me just copy that URL. And let's say, okay, I noticed that I accidentally committed some information that I shouldn't have, so I'm just going to delete the repository, thinking that that will remove this information from the public record. So I'll go to Settings. Delete this repository. I want to delete this repository, yes. Okay, now it's gone. That information should no longer be publicly available, right? Well, maybe. Let's go back to the YTDLP repository. And if I paste in this URL that I had before, which contains the commit hash, let's see what we get. So notice that here it says, this commit does not belong to any branch on this repository and may belong to a fork outside the repository. Oh, look. Here is that commit that I made, where I deleted all of this information from the readme and added a secret. So this information that I thought would no longer be accessible actually is. Hmm, interesting. Notice, however, that we needed to actually know the commit ID to do this, and the commit ID is a pretty long hash, so trying to brute force that is actually quite difficult. So you might think, okay, well, at least there's some kind of safety there, but... You don't need the full hash. Let's see how far we can get. Let's delete all that. Yep, still accessible. Let's go back one more. Let's go back two more characters. Yep, still accessible. What would we delete the B for? Okay, then it's not found. B, still not found. Okay, looks like in this case, the minimum that we need is six characters, which isn't enough to be safe against a brute force attack. Like, that is not a huge number. I think each one of these is 16, since it's a hexadecimal. And so 16 to the power of 6. It's a large number, 16 million, but it's not large enough that I would consider this to be secure. So anyone that knows the commit hashes, and as I mentioned earlier, even the short commit hashes, which can possibly be brute forced, then they'd be able to access all that private information. The minimum number of characters that Git requires for a short commit hash is actually 4. So instead of 16 to the 6, the minimum is actually 16 to the 4, which is 65,536, very much in the realm of being brute forcible. And in fact, the commit hash is actually discoverable. Remember how I mentioned that you need the commit hash to access that private information? Well, here's a place where you can find it. GitHub Archive. This is a website that basically archives every single event that happens on GitHub. There are 15 plus event 
types, which I won't go into the details of, but basically this is a massive store of information about every single thing that happens on GitHub, which includes commits. This means that the hashes for just about every commit on every repository that was at once public are available on this website. And how often can we find data from deleted forks? Well, the person that wrote this blog post, Joe Leon from Truffle Security Company, found 40 valid API keys from deleted forks, in which apparently users did something like this. First, they forked the repo, then they hard-coded an API key into an example file, then they did some changes, and then they deleted the fork. Like this. This is something that a new user might want to do. They'd see a placeholder in some example file showing how to use the program that's in a certain repository, and they'll just change the example file to contain the API key. That seems like a reasonable way to do things as a new user, especially if you know that you're going to delete the fork later. Unfortunately, this vulnerability shows that no, you absolutely should not do that, because even if you delete the fork, you cannot trust GitHub to actually securely delete it. However, that's not the only vulnerability here. It gets worse. Accessing deleted repo data. So consider this situation. You have a public repository on GitHub, some user forks your repo, you commit data after they fork it, and they never sync their fork with your updates, and you delete the entire repo. In this case, the code that you committed after they forked is still accessible. So as long as at least one fork exists, then that information will be publicly accessible forever. So I mentioned earlier that this is a feature instead of a bug, and why is that? Well, let's go into the details. So GitHub stores repositories and forks in a kind of repository network, with the original upstream repository acting as the root node. It's like a tree, the way that Git itself is a tree, right? You have an initial commit, and then you have branches on top of that, and you have a whole history that comes back to this root. However, in this GitHub repository network, when a public upstream repository that has been forked is deleted, instead of just deleting the whole tree, because, well, GitHub, you know, probably shouldn't do that. You wouldn't really want your fork to be deleted if the upstream goes away. The way that GitHub solves this issue is by reassigning the root node to one of the downstream forks. However, notice what happens here. All of the commits from the upstream repository still exist and are accessible via any fork. And according to the author, this isn't some hypothetical scenario. And apparently this just happened last week. Quote, I submitted a P1 vulnerability to a major tech company showing that they accidentally committed a private key for an employee's GitHub account that had significant access to their entire GitHub organization. So obviously that is a pretty big security vulnerability. The company should, first of all, get rid of that API key. And second of all, probably remove that from the history if possible. Well, what they did is they immediately deleted the repository but since it had been forked, you could still access the commit containing sensitive data via a fork, despite the fork never syncing with the original upstream repository. Which is very scary. That seems like a huge violation of the trust that users have in GitHub. The implication here is that any code committed to any public repository may be accessible forever, as long as there is at least one fork of that repository. So even if that fork doesn't have some commits that are on your upstream version or on your private version or anywhere, as long as one public fork exists, every commit in that repository network is public forever. But it gets worse. Accessing private repo data. Okay, so consider this common workflow for open sourcing a new tool on GitHub. So step one is you create a private repo that will eventually be made public. You know, you might not want to create it publicly right off the bat because it's still in a very early state and maybe it just doesn't make sense to have people looking into it and, you know, you're just not ready to manage the community yet. Perfectly reasonable. Afterwards, you create a private internal version of the repo via forking and commit additional code for features you're not going to make public. Again, that makes sense. Let's say that this is something that you're trying to make money from. Well, that seems like a reasonable way to do it. You might have a public version that is fully open source, that has all of its code accessible, and then you add some kind of enterprise features that you want to charge money for in a private fork. Okay, seems reasonable. And step three, you make your upstream repository public and keep your fork private. This seems like a fairly common workflow. And you might think that the private features that you added to your private fork are inaccessible to the public, but guess what? They are 100% viewable by anyone. Any code committed between the time you created an internal fork of your tool and when you open source the tool, those commits are accessible on the public repository. 
So just to clarify, any commits you made to the private fork after you make the upstream repository public are not viewable. And the reason for that is because changing the visibility of a private upstream repository results in two repository networks, one for the private version and one for the public version. So looking at this graph, these commits that are on this private fork of a tool are public. And again, here's a demo video. I'm not going to play it. If you want to see the details, check out the link. It'll be in the description. And this is a fairly common workflow, right? Like creating something private and then creating a private fork of it and then making the original public. That seems like a totally reasonable thing that many people would do and would assume that everything that is in the private fork stays private and everything that's in the public upstream version is public. But no, apparently with GitHub, that's not the case. So what does GitHub have to say about this? Well, the authors submitted their findings to GitHub via their bug program, and here's the response. Thanks for the submission. This is an intentional design decision and is working as expected as noted in our documentation. We may make this functionality more strict in the future, but don't have anything to announce right now. So it's a feature, not a bug. And it's pretty clear, actually, in their documentation that it was designed to work this way. Under important security considerations, you can see, Commits to any repository in a fork network can be accessed from any repository in the same fork network, including the upstream repository. And under the section, changing a private repository to a public repository, they say, when you change a private repository to public, all the commits in that repository, including any commits made in the repositories that it was forked into, will be visible to everyone. So there we go, it's in the docs. GitHub says it's a feature and that's how it's intended to work. However, I don't think users really understand that, or at least most users don't. At least to me, I haven't looked into these pages in detail, so you know what, maybe that's entirely my fault. But I think most users would assume that if you delete something, that information will no longer be available. And that information in a private fork will always remain private, so perhaps it's time for GitHub to revisit this. And the author of the blog post agrees with me. The average user views the separation of private and public repositories as a security boundary, and understandably believes that any data located in a private repository cannot be accessed by public users. Unfortunately, as we documented above, that is not always true. What's more, the action of deletion implies the destruction of data. However, as we saw, deleting a repository or fork does not mean that your commit data is actually deleted. Now, before any of you FSF shill jump in and say, oh, well, clearly this is Microsoft in shittifying the product, and, well, if they hadn't acquired GitHub, this wouldn't have happened. And to that I say, no, I don't think so. GitHub was designed this way from the start, where it was supposed to be a place for open code collaboration, where everything is visible publicly, and all of this information is available to anyone that wants to see it. So I would actually say that, if anything, Microsoft didn't focus hard enough on what enterprises want, and that is privacy and the ability to hide information from people. I think if they focused a bit harder on that, this issue actually wouldn't have happened because this functionality would have been removed or changed earlier. I'm not against open source, but I'm just saying, in this case, it does seem like they're taking open architecture a bit too far. So what are the takeaways from this? Well, the main one is, as long as a fork exists, any commit to that repository network, which includes commits on the upstream repo or downstream forks, will exist forever. You cannot delete them, you cannot hide them, they will always be publicly accessible. This means that simply deleting a commit that accidentally added some private information is not enough. If a private API key was committed, for example, you must immediately rotate that API key. If some private information, such as maybe a person's name and social security number were committed, too bad, that information will always be publicly accessible forever. The second takeaway is that perhaps GitHub should change this. Now, GitHub has a reputation for being very good about security, right? They put a lot of work into making sure that their products are very secure, that things that are private are intended to be private, right? They have a very advanced security program. They have, you know, all these certifications by all these standards. And basically, they put a lot of work into making sure that all of the information that is intended to be private is private. So perhaps it's time to change the way that these repository networks work because security is only as good as the users. And if users don't understand the security model, and clearly they don't, then perhaps it's time to change the security model.
But what do you think? Did you know that GitHub works this way? Because I sure as heck didn't. Let me know in the comments.